because you're anointed. And to be anointed, by the way, all right, means to be set apart. And it refers to, when you really do an in-depth study of the word, as you must be a king or a priest to be anointed, all right, which you are according to Revelation chapter 1. It also means that you will be empowered by the anointed one. So when you get born again, you're anointed, you're set apart as a king or a priest and the priest. You've been going through some deep issues, some dark issues in a sense, trials, all right? And 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 you feel like you're walking through the fire and and we we, we you know, it, it, and it's it's just not an everyday normal trial. I mean, I'm not saying anything profound. I'm just saying what's going on in the world today. And we feel that way, all right? But but th they are trials today that really make no sense, some of the things we're going through. You know, years ago it was, you know, oh, yeah, I had, I had surgery on this, and I, had, I, I broke that, and I, I woke up ill. You know, today the, the, the things that are going on are just crazy, these pan this pandemic thing. You know, we're trying to figure all of this out. The why question has become a popular question. Why this is happening, why that's happening, you know, and all of that kind of talk. And I, I want to tell you that the answer for a lot of us is because you're anointed. Some things ha happen to you because of the anointing that's upon you. See, I got to tell you, I'm talking to you from experience here, that I know that the fight I'm in is a fight, a good fight, and I plan on winning the good fight, all right? But I know that the attacks that are on my family are because I'm anointed and because of the anointing, all right? So I recognize that, and I make a choice. What am I going to do? Am I going to live like a king or a priest and take the authority that a king and priest has and come against everything that's trying to come against my anointing, you better believe I'm gonna, or am I gonna throw in the towel? I got news for you, I don't have a towel to throw in. I don't want one. How many of us would be honest enough to say you could have avoided many hardships in life, don't raise your hand, all right, if you made better decisions? I'll raise mine. So we ignored good advice, maybe B.C., before Christ, Okay, even maybe afterwards. But yet, God still shined his mercy upon us. Listen, church, we need to stay with the anointing. I don't care how it looks. I don't care how big it looks. I don't care how it sounds. All right? You need the anointing. I'm not against talent, education, or anything of that nature. All right? I'm not against, you know, a, a, a big church. But the fact is when I'm going through something and the devil is trying to take you out, is trying to get you to live in fear, get you to live under the realm of anxiety, okay? The fact is when I'm going through hell, okay, or my ministry or my family, I got to have the anointing that breaks the yoke. That's the thing that's going to destroy everything the devil's trying to throw at you. Amen? Paul was not, you know, Paul was, was not just a man, but he was an, an anointed man filled with Holy Ghost power. Hear what I'm telling you, all right? And, and you and I need the anointing for victory, for healing, uh, to sustain, for our miracles, for our destiny. It's impossible to overestimate the power of the anointing. Your job, your company that you work for, your organization, whichever they may be, okay, they don't know how blessed they are to have you. <laughs> I love it. I'm glad I got it. That's right. Because when you walk on that territory, that premise, okay, the anointing walks with you. That school ought to be happy you're going there. You know, your neighbors ought to be happy you live where you live. Can I tell you? I tell, I tell my neighbor across the street from me, he's, I love him, okay? You ought to thank God I live on this block. I said, storms come, not even a leaf falls off your tree. 
<laughs> but you, you know what I'm saying. This church thanks God, thank God, that you're here because you're anointed. See, we all know people that said the same thing about us when you're going through things. They're not going to make it. My cousin had that thing, you know, and he didn't make it, you know. They, this is how they talk. I, I, I knew they wouldn't make it, you know. That, that, I knew that, that that wouldn't last. That Jesus stuff I knew would fade away. It's just a fad he's going through, you know. This is a fad that still hasn't faded, you know. Still hasn't faded. I knew they'd never qualify for that job, you know, but the anointing, we, we bought a lot. We built this house that we're living in still today, 20, I don't know, seven, 28 years ago. It's a beautiful home. I make no bones about it. We worked hard. And uh, this is what I'm hearing. He'll lose that house. That won't last. Before you know it, he'll be in foreclosure, you know. And I could have been into that. I could have. But I, I know the Lord, see, and I, and I said, no, the anointing will take care of it. The anointing will get me more sales to pay for the house. Well, it's 28 years later. We're still living there. And uh, the house is paid, just so you know. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so praise God. So, you know, this is the way they say it. They see it. They say, you know, can I tell you? Sometimes you're going to disappoint somebody. Now you say, well, I don't want to disappoint anybody. No, when they say you can't and you do, that's disappointing them. Paul disappointed them. You understand? They wanted him dead. They thought he'd die. But he shook it off, church. You understand? He shook it off. Because I got news for you. There's no expiration date on your anointing. No, there isn't. It keeps on keeping on. All right? And, you, you know... You, you continue to fight the good fight of faith. You continue to cry that other tear. God sees it all, and he's increasing your anointing, church. Uh, listen, somebody said, you know, well, they'll never make it. We're still here. Then somebody say, oh, she'll give up on that, Jesus. You're still here. You're still watching. You're still going. You're still serving. Even though when they said, uh, don't never get past that time, well, we're still here. Hallelujah. I'm winning. I know there are days when it looks like the devil's winning, but we're winning. Just like Dee Dee said before. You know? And, 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 but I want you just for a moment to look back. Sometimes you got to just look back over your shoulder and say, look what the Lord has done. Sometimes you just got to remind yourself of where you came from. Don't live there. Just remind yourself. And it keeps you inspired. It keeps you going, church. You know, maybe you've been rejected. You know, maybe you've been through foreclosure, bankruptcy. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe the so-called friends that says, I got your back, instead he stabbed you in the back. But you're still here. And the moment that you're still here, you're still watching, that means you're still winning. Amen? I'm no longer just surviving. I'm thriving. Hello, church, all right? I'm coming out stronger, bolder, more anointed, more of a threat to hell than ever before, and I'm going to shout, look what the Lord has done. Amen. I'm not going anywhere, devil. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to even get weary in well-doing. I may just get weary, okay, but not in well-doing. Hear what I'm saying? Am I talking to anybody who has been bitten? Oh, my God. Woo, we've all been bitten here or there. Am I talking to anybody? Some of you still have the scars of the fangs of the devil. Some of you are still waking up in the middle of the night and, and being shook by the devil. Remind him he's messing with the anointed, church. Uh, I know it's painful, but it's not fatal. I know, church, it hurts, but God will heal it. Uh, I know, church, it looks bad, but God will make it look better. I know, church, that you're crying, but somebody shout, joy is coming in the morning. Get thee behind me, Satan. I've got power to tread upon you. Every scorpion and every serpent. What is that devil going to do? He's going to go back to brother so-and-so 
and sister so-and-so who he was messing with and getting away with. He is not messing with that sister or brother that will stand up and say, I'm the anointed of the Lord. I decree and declare you to get under my feet in Jesus' name. I'm a king, I'm a priest, and here's what kings and priests have. They have dominion, they have authority, and the authority in a king says things and gets things done. The, 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 the authority of a priest says, I can go anywhere that I want. I can go even though the veil has not been torn, I can go into the holy of holies, and that's the authority and the dominion that you have. Father, I pray a blessing over all those that are here today and all those that are watching. May the hand of God follow them and be with them yes, in all that they do, Lord. Father, bless their going and bless their coming. Bless their homes, Lord, their children, their families, their friends. Bless their neighborhoods, their jobs, their careers. Lord, as we leave, we leave under the unction of God and under the anointing of God. We go out of this place blessed and highly favored and greatly loved. And as we do, we depart till Wednesday night and we go in peace. God bless you all that are watching and all of you that are here. Go in peace.